Welcome back ladies and gents. In this teaching video I'm looking at 2.5 coding. 2.5 represents chapter 2 section 5 of the person A level master applied master 1 textbook. Let's go through the key facts of this section. Let x be the original data value. We can code the data using the formula y equal x minus a all over b where y represents the coded data value a and b are constants. In general a measure of location is affected by all operations but a measure of spread is only affected by multiplication and division. Let's have a look at an example of a measure of spread. In particular, we're going to look at the range. So e dot g dot. Consider the coding y equal x minus 20. y is the coded data value, x is the original data value. Suppose the largest value of a data set is 80 and the smallest value of a data set is 30. When x is equal to 80, y is equal to 80 minus 20, which is 60. Okay, so that is the largest coded data value. When x is equal to 30, y is equal to 30 minus 20, which is 10. That is the smallest coded data value. Now, the original range is 80 minus 30, so 80 minus 30, which is 50. The coded range is 60 minus 10, so 60 minus 10, which is 50. As you can see over here, the original range and the coded range is the same. Okay, so the range is not affected by the minus 20. So these are the key facts. I'm going to be implementing these key facts to exam style questions. Here is exam style question one. The coded mean price of televisions in a shop was worked out. Using the coding y equal x minus 65 over 200, the mean price was 1.5. Find the true mean price of the televisions. Okay, so firstly, we've got the coding y equal x minus 65 over 200. x represents the original data value. y represents the coded data value. Now using the coding y equal x minus 65 over 200, the mean price was 1.5. So that is the coded mean. y bar is equal to 1.5. Find the true mean price of the televisions. So we are trying to work out x bar. So how do we do this? First of all, we take the coding and we modify it. We know that a measure of location is affected by all operations. So the minus and the division will be included. But we're going to put a bar on top of the y and the x. So we've got y bar is equal x bar minus 65 all over 200. So we know what y bar is, it is 1.5, the coded mean. So we've got 1.5 is equal x bar minus 65 all over 200. Okay, so to work out x bar, we have to rearrange. So we can do 1.5 multiplied by 200 plus the 65. Okay, so if we put this into our calculator, we get that x bar is equal to 365. So that there represents the true mean price of the televisions. And this completes exam style question one. Here is exam style question two. The weekly income I of 100 women workers was recorded. The data was coded using y equal I minus 90 over 100. And the following summations were obtained. So we've got sum of y is equal to 131. Sum of y squared is equal to 176.84. Estimate the standard deviation of the actual women workers' weekly income. Right, firstly, we've got the coding y equal i minus 90 all over 100, where y represents the coded data value and i represents the original data value. Now, what we want to estimate is the standard deviation of the actual women workers' weekly income. So we're trying to work out sigma i. This is what we're trying to calculate. Now, if I go to the coding, I can modify it to include sigmas, standard deviations. Now, we know that a standard deviation is a measure of spread. A measure of spread is only affected by multiplication and division. So over here, we can neglect the minus 90. Okay, so if we modify this in terms of standard deviations, we have sigma y, okay, replacing y, equal uh, sigma i 
replacing i. Okay, minus 90 is neglected, so we just divide by 100. Okay, now to calculate sigma i, the standard deviation of the actual women workers' weekly income, we have to multiply by 100 on the left hand side. So sigma i is equal 100 multiplied by sigma y. So all that's needed is sigma y, the coded standard deviation. To work out sigma y, we can apply the formula for standard deviation. So we have the square root of the variance, which is given by mean of the squares. Okay, so mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So we have sigma y is equal square root, substitute the values. So here's my first summation that I'm going to substitute, 176.84 divide by n. n is the sample size. We're looking at 100 women workers. So n is 100 minus square of the mean. So this summation, I'm going to substitute it in. That's 131 divide by 100. Okay, so that there is the coded standard deviation. Now I can actually work out the standard deviation of the actual women workers' weekly income. In other words, sigma i. So to work out sigma i, all we have to do is 100 multiplied by sigma y, which is the square root of 176.84 over 100 minus 131 over 100 in bracket squared. Okay, so if I put this into my calculator and I round off to three significant figures, I get 22.9 to three significant figures. And that, ladies and gents, is the standard deviation of the actual women workers' weekly income. This completes exam style question two. Here is exam style question three. A teacher standardizes the test marks of his class by adding 12 to each one and then reducing the mark by 20%. If the standardized marks are represented by T, and the original marks are represented by M. Part A, write down a formula for the coding the teacher has used. So the coding is represented by T, the standardized marks. So T is calculated by taking the original mark M, adding 12 to it, and then reducing by 20%. So we have 100%, take away 20%, which is 80%. To find the multiplier, we do 80 divided by 100 which is 0 0.8. This is my multiplier. So I can multiply this bracket by 0 0.8. Okay, so that there's the coding. We can expand the bracket, and if we do this, we get 0 0.8m plus 9.6. T represents the standardized marks. And M represents the original mark. Okay, let's move on to part B. The following was calculated for the standardized marks. The sample size, the mean, and the summary statistic, which is 7.3. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of the original marks gained. So what we are trying to calculate over here is M bar and sigma M. Let's start with M bar. We have the coding T equal 0.8M plus 9.6. Now M bar is a measure of location. A measure of location is affected by all operations. So we can modify this coding and we can write T bar equal 0.8M bar plus 9.6. Now in the question, T bar is 52.8. So we've got 52.8 is equal 0 0.8 m bar plus 9.6. So now we can make m bar the subject. So m bar is equal to 52.8 minus 9.6 divided by 0 0.8. So we can put this into our calculator. And if we do this, we get m bar is equal to 54. Okay, so ladies and gents, that there represents the mean of the original marks gained. Let's move on to sigma m, the standard deviation of the original marks gained. Let's go back to the coding. We've got the coding t equal 0.8m 
plus 9.6. Now, standard deviation represents a measure of spread. A measure of spread is only affected by multiplication and division. So, when I rewrite this coding in terms of standard deviations, I'm going to neglect the plus 9.6. So, what we have is sigma t replacing t equal 0 0.8 sigma m replacing m. Now we can rearrange and make sigma m the subject. So sigma m is equal sigma t divided by 0 0.8. So all I now need to calculate is sigma t. Okay, so we can calculate sigma t using this summary statistic. So the standard deviation sigma t is given by square root of the summary statistic s little t little t over the sample size, which is 28. So we have sigma t is equal to square root of 7.3 over 28. Okay, so we can put this into here. So we've got sigma m is equal sigma t, which is square root 7.3 over 28. This whole thing divide by 0 0.8. Okay, so now I can put this into my calculator and round off to three significant figures. So sigma m is equal 0 0.638 to three significant figures. And that there is the standard deviation of the original marks gained. This completes part B of the question and exam style question 3. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a teaching video.